Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here with master gardener, Judy of Judy's Homegrown, that's going to be teaching us, what are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to be learning how to prune citrus trees. Wonderful. So the five areas I wanna cover is when to prune, suckers, shape of the uh, citrus tree, which branches to prune, and then how to prevent sun scald of, awesome. the fruit, of the fruit. So we got five helpful tips for citrus tree care by judyshomegrown.com and let's get started. So what's our first lesson for citrus tree care? Well, you need to know when to prune. And the books sometimes will say January, but we live in Southern California where you can pretty much prune all year round. And every tree is different because they flower and fruit at different times. So the answer, the better answer to that is to prune after all the fruits take, been taken off. Or in the case of lemons and limes, you can prune just any time, as long as it's not wet weather, as long as it's not moist outside. The point with the lemons and limes is there's always something happening within those trees. There's always either flowers or fruits or, you know, fruit that you're picking. There's all, all stages of fruit development happening. Right. And the point is, after you pick the ripe fruit, that's the time to go after the tree. And... I mean, I can look at my trees right now and say, oh my God, they're shooting up and I want to take those top branches that are growing straight up off the tree. So sometimes it's when you see something that's a miss and that tree's getting out of bounds where you want it to be in bounds. Got it. It's the lowest uh, maintenance tree ever is citrus trees. When people- More so than apples and peaches and everything else. Oh yeah. Okay, well, let's get into that. Um, so I've done some research as well on citrus and I like pruning my trees, but I know there's some research out there that says never prune your citrus tree. Yeah, actually citrus trees are the lowest maintenance tree, fruit tree available. So if you, well, there's other, <laughs> other fruit trees. Well, I'm just thinking, let's... I'm just saying it's of the, of the varieties, so many types of trees, citrus are the easiest. And what I makes think. them so easy? because they they flower and fruit and they thin, self thin without you doing a thing. And, uh, you know, obviously <laughs> the worst part is if your tree's not going well, it's because it's usually a watering issue or the soil issue, but we're talking about trees that are healthy. They don't really require much. Having said that, I do prune them to uh, one, to kind of clean out the tree and two, to uh, keep it in bounds or whatever whatever shape or size you want it to be, you could prune that tree to that shape or that size. So if you don't want the, uh, the fruit to be out of reach, then you can keep it low and always in an area where you can reach. And then that way it'll bloom and ultimately fruit all within reach. Exactly, that's Wonderful. the whole goal. For time. As far as when to prune in cooler climates though, you really should only uh, cut during the growth period which is usually spring because you want those cuts to heal over so in the spring you allow the hardening of the wood and then that main growth period is is uh, done then before the cold sets in it's already hardened that's a pretty good tip so again the goal is to not prune in the winter or and that kind of applies to a lot of other fruit trees as well if you're pruning in winter or early winter, the tree's not really growing and thereby not healing over those wounds you've right. created. But if we wait till later winter and early spring, then its growth during the spring and summer and fall months will begin to heal over those wounds that were created. Right, so, so when you read that you're supposed to only prune in January, <laughs> I would have to say, don't always listen to that. Spring is when the tree is putting out all its new growth. So remember that whenever you prune is that 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 cut needs to heal over that makes sense um so what's another lesson this is now citrus care tip number two well when i approach a citrus tree 
the one of the first things I might look for is whether it has a sucker coming out of the rootstock. If it has a sucker coming out of the rootstock, you must absolutely get rid of it right away <laughs> because sometimes the sucker will take over and you won't even recognize the tree anymore. It'll just be that rootstock. For example, Cuban shaddock is extremely aggressive. And if it puts out a few really long branches that it'll dominate the tree and that original cultivar will disappear. And that's happened to me before, so I know what it's like. Doesn't mean you have to get rid of your Cuban shaddock. You can graft onto it and then have a new tree really quickly. But having said that, I just would, as first, the first thing I wanna see is if this tree has a rootstock. Now, how do you know it's a rootstock coming out? How do you know it's a sucker? So the easiest way to tell if you have a sucker or not is, is it coming from below the graft union? And I can show you what that graft union looks like on my trees so you can see where there's a, an actual line between the rootstock where that was uh, below that line and the grafted union above that line. Anything above that is okay. So if you take a look over here, I've already started painting it and then I'm like, I wanna share this with um, my viewers over here. If you take a look, the base of the tree is actually the rootstock and I was actually grafted for disease resistance, for drought resistance, for frost resistance, for all the things that are gonna make this tree a success growing up here in the Bay Area, which is a 9B growing zone, meaning the nighttime low temperatures between December and March can be anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees, which is quite cold for citrus. So having a good rootstock and actually picking up a good variety from your nursery is important to make sure that they've actually got it grooved on a root that'll actually result in healthy and strong trees year after year. So this tree is about 10 years old and you can see um, the difference between the rootstock, which is more of a lighter brown and the actual um, tr variety of fruit that we're actually wanting that actually has a darker brown, um, darker brown bark. If you take a look over here, we've actually, they've actually pruned these branches in the past. Some of these have actually got these little nubs, which should have actually been pruned a little bit closer to the tree. So I'm actually going to do that um, real quickly. So what I'm going to do over here is actually remove this knob, which will never or actually maybe it'll heal, but it's gonna take a lot longer than if we actually pruned it to be more flush with the tree trunk. So, but as a nub, it's actually gonna always exist and it's gonna be an entryway point for wood destroying organisms such as termites and beetles to get into the living tissues of the tree. But by pruning it here, a little closer to the tree, as the plant expands year after year, this will ultimately seal and close itself up and eventually go in, just as this is over here. You can see that it's starting to callus and, and create a seal um, around it. Here's another example as well, right here. This was another pruned branch in the past. Another year or two, this will be gone. It'll be buried underneath the tree trunk. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint, and it reads a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. The other important thing to consider about this product is this tree is actually in a tree form. There's at least two to three feet of tree trunk, which are now exposed to the sun throughout the day. And this here is gonna actually keep the plant nice and cool during the um, hot summer days. It's also gonna actually protect the tree from sun scald, which is an issue that happens, which is an issue that happens in the winter where the daytime temperatures may go up a little bit too high, causing the, causing the tree sap to actually warm up and, and, and start flowing in the tree. And when the nighttime low temperatures drop again at night, the tree actually, the tree trunk will actually crack. And when the tree trunk cracks, that's an entryway for wood destroying organisms to get in there, such as the beetles and termites. And actually it can shorten the life of the tree. So this here is gonna protect from both sunburn, sun scald, and it also um, will protect from insects from getting into the tree trunk. And also, if there's any rodents that actually decide to chew on this, it actually has some oils that'll actually repel and it's actually so distasteful to rodents that they should actually um, be repelled by the taste. So that's it. So you can see, pretty much coated it. We pretty much want to do anything that would be exposed um, to the sun. And this actually is, is low enough that it will protect against the rodents, which would be more so within the first foot or two of the tree. Cool. And also, when you see a, a branch that's coming out below all the others, that has maybe way more spikes on it, or has trifoliate leaves, that means three leaves 
instead of uh, the like the rest of the tree will have one leaf per leaf. This this trifoliate is really uh, obvious to see. Trifoliate is a really common rootstock. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you an example of that. Great. And then something else I've also noticed in my experience, and like you said at the beginning when it comes to sucker growth, is sometimes the sucker growth will dominate to the detriment of the scion, which is the selected flavor that was grafted on top of that rootstock. And the rootstock's used obviously for disease resistance. It controls the size of the tree, whether or not you're using a dwarf or a semi-dwarf or a standard rootstock. And the goal in removing, as you just um, indicated, it's important to immediately remove those suckers because the rootstock will sometimes favor itself naturally over the grafted union, which is the selected flavor that we're desiring and the reason we bought that tree in the first place. And actually the rootstocks are often very aggressive, very strong. And that's the whole point of selecting them was that they were gonna be super strong trees. And unfortunately, if you allow that sucker to stay there, it will take sap energy. That's why they call them suckers because they're sucking energy away from the rest of the tree. The grafted tree, the flavor we want to enjoy that's being sucked away. Right. <laughs> that's an awesome lesson. So, so here we are now behind the Valencia orange tree and this here is one of a few suckers that are actually coming off of the root or the rootstock. This tree's been um, grafted onto, it could be a variety of different rootstocks and the rootstocks actually offer the plant disease resistance, it offers drought tolerance, it actually again we're growing in a 9B um, area which has really cold winter so it can pro provide frost resistance as well to the citrus tree. Um, and most importantly, it also controls height. So depending on the rootstock, we can actually grow the same Valencia orange on a dwarf rootstock, on a semi-dwarf rootstock, and on a standard um, rootstock, and still generate the same flavor and the same quality and the same size of fruit. Um, quantity actually will be different depending on the size of the tree. The larger tree will obviously produce a lot more fruit, but again, the quality and the flavor will always be the same regardless of the size of the tree. So here we actually know that we're actually dealing with a sucker Aside from actually examining, and it wasn't where the where the sucker was coming from, but when I noticed it, it actually had some very sharp thorns. Um, I hope you can capture that in, in the video if you want to zoom in over here. You'll actually see that it's got very sharp thorns um, that are coming out pretty much every leaf. So these thorns were my indicator that I knew that I was dealing with something that was other than the selected grafted variety of the Valencia orange. This here um, could be one of any any of a dozen type of rootstocks. Common names are flying dragon. Uh, another one is trifoliate. Another one is the sour orange rootstock. And again, there's a dozen um, varieties that it could be grafted onto. But what we're going to do here today is remove them. We're going to correct some other issues that I've spotted below, and then we're going to be using Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint to actually heal and protect the tree to give it as many more years um, of, of fruitful years. Come and follow me um, over here so I can show you the details. So if, you, so if you now zoom in a little bit closer to the base of the tree, you'll actually see that these suckers are coming down from below. And what I'm going to do is just take my pruners and cut it. And actually, that's a little bit too thick, so I'm going to use the saw. I'm actually going to cut it as close as I can to the base of the tree. And here's one root saw. And take a look again at those thorns. This has nothing to do with the actual fruit tree. If you take a look at the fruit tree um, branches and leaves, you'll see here are the, here are the actual leaves and there's no thorns coming out from in between. And if you come even closer to this, you can actually see that there's some thorns. And again, this is the Valencia orange, and you can see that they're very, very small. Unlike the rootstock thorns that are coming out that are over an inch long, these are probably one to three millimeters in length compared to this again. Look how long these thorns are. They're probably one to two inches in length. So big difference. So you know that this is not the same citrus variety um, that's going to produce the fruit that we're actually desiring here in our orchard. So here we're just going to continue to remove all the suckers. And another one here in the back. And this is very important to remove these suckers from your tree because it's consuming the nutrients from your soil, it's consuming the sugars that the tree is producing, it's, it's taking away from the energy and the nutrients and all the benefits that are actually going into what would otherwise be your fruiting tree. This is not gonna pro um, provide any desired results for you and your family to enjoy. So you gotta remove it. What's our third citrus care gardening tip? 
So the third uh, lesson is really how to shape the tree, which is up to you up to a point, but then we need to factor in uh, what is the purpose of leaf cover. So let's talk about the shape of the tree. Uh, we're talking about like a lollipop shape as opposed to uh, a stone fruit tree where you have to pull the branches horizontally. You don't have to do that. There's no training really required unless the tree is listing to one side because there's a lot of wind always blowing in that direction and then you have to train it back in a more straight. Yeah, that's the only time on what I could really see that or in the case of I have a tree that's near my garage and it's always growing into the toward the garage where the cars want to come in. So I actually tie the tree up against itself so that it stays out of the way of the car coming in and out. I mean, you can always tie a tree or make a tree do what you want. Um, but the point of it is the shape of the tree for health and for pr fruit production is pretty much a rounded shape. And we'll get into why that is a little bit later. Now, as far as the fourth part, which is which which branches should we prune and how should we prune those branches? Well, you don't want any branches brushing the ground because you know if there's any fruit coming from them, they're gonna lay on the soil and get rot or maybe a, a, a bug. It's a lot more pests. All the yeah, soil biology is gonna be touching the fruit. And, exactly. And probably gonna shorten its life. So remove the branch so that nothing's touching. You can possibly remove something hanging down from it and keep a little bit of the branch above uh, but imagine that branch loaded with fruit, it, it may sag. So you have to keep in mind, what, it's, what is it gonna look like if it has a lot of fruit on it? So in general, you'd wanna keep your lower branches about, I'm guessing a foot off the ground maybe, maybe 18 inches? Yeah, so at least a foot off the ground. Um, that, that, that is completely not important <laughs> if you're inside of a, a growing environment that's um, more controlled, for example, inside of a greenhouse or inside your house, yeah. not not as important. Or even in a container. If your citrus is growing in a container, then now the f branches can hang a little bit lower as right, the right. fruit are never going to come in contact with the ground. Exactly. If the container, if the, the branch goes over the container, that's fine too. Okay. So, uh, and then we want to look for those shoots that are going straight up. Uh, the ones that are taking all the oxen, which is a, a powerful uh, hormone, hormone yeah. from the tree. Those, the highest branches always get the most oxen. And what that does is it really, um, you know, it'll put the tree in a whole nother stratosphere. Whereas if you cu cut your tree pretty much across in a, this lollipop shape, then no one branch is getting that that extra boost of oxen. They're I know we're all both, getting it evenly. I know we're both looking to the left. I'm going to make sure that the viewers can see what we're looking at as we're um, demonstrating this. And the other thing too with oxens is oxens inhibit also lateral growth. And that's the reason, as you just said, it just keeps on growing taller and taller as the oxens are, are preventing that bushiness, which is desired in the home garden is to have a more compact, you know, and within reach, you know, fruit. Otherwise, as you said, the tree will just continue growing. That's a very good point. <laughs> so the oxen, a hormone is really important to understand how it works and why we're cutting the way we are. So the next thing is water shoots. There are sometimes branches that just go way too far off to the left or way too high up and then, uh, and then arch over and they're having nothing to do with the rest of the tree. And I actually have some water shoots on this, uh, this um, navel orange that I'll be able to show you. Great. Um, and the goal again with water shoots is they are also cool. very vigorous. They take vigor away from the rest of the tree and they won't produce fruit a lot of times. They upset the balance of the tree. So very little to no fruit on water shoots. And the goal is to remove that. So again, resources are going in the right direction. Right. And even if they do produce some fruit, you'll see it just unbalances the tree and it'll grow into a walkway or it'll be in the way. And what you want to do is cut flush to the branch, which we're going to show in, in, in a demonstration. Okay. And then we want to remove any inward growing shoots. So all the, the branches and laterals should be going out toward the outside of the tree. If you see anything inward growing, which is very unusual, um, then you 
want to get rid of it. And when we get to the top of the tree, you'll see how I always prune to outward facing buds. And that is when it counts the most because we're going to be cutting with uh, the thought that we're going to make this uh, tree more rounded and more bushy. So we have to choose where we want the next season's growth to go. Got it. Again, I just want to reiterate any growth that's coming from the outside in you're gonna to wanna to remove it. The growth should be coming from the primary trunk, lower branches, and all heading in the outward direction. Right. And never growing back in towards the center. And that'll give you your lollipop shape. So that's for pruning which branches and which ones. Um, oh, and I wanna say one other thing is there are some branches, and you'll you'll find this every single year, that are just dead, and they're the ins uh, usually on the inside but they could be anywhere. And you wanna remove those because they're dead, but also so that you can clean out the tree. It's, it's, it's a hygiene thing. You have to do that twice a year. Just go in to the center of the tree. It's the best way to do it is to do it, get under the tree and actually stand somewhere where it's not poking you and just go at all those dead branches. It's because they didn't get any sunlight that those branches have died because there's nothing feeding them. And that's a process you should be doing how often? Twice a year. Twice a year. So another point you made in regards to the lollipop shape, and I'm trying to you know, visualize even though your trees, and you also mentioned they're more rounded in shape, but I'm also trying to visualize you know, a lollipop on a long stick, kind of yeah. like a lollipop, and that stick, the, lo the, the stick portion of the lollipop is gonna be now exposed to too much sun. And I know in my experience, I visited a home in North Hollywood a little over a year ago where the landscaper pruned one of the three primary branches leading towards the pool. And when they pruned that branch within three months, that whole underside story of the tree, the primary tree trunk experienced third degree sunburns, being the bark burn, the underlying cambium tissues fried, and the underlying wood was now exposed to the elements. And this was a wound that will probably take a decade or longer and maybe never because it was that large the entire length and about half the tree trunk the whole south southwest side of the tree just burned off basically being that it was once in the shade and now it's in the sun um what can you say again in regards to um you know shape and size and you know in, in regards to preventing that, that sunburn damage from happening so all of my trees as i'm looking around they all have so much leaf cover and they're so dense that you can't see the trunk from far away. It's, it's hidden and it's also in shade. So the point to shaping the tree is two, two things. One is the leaf cover protects the trunk, but the leaf cover also needs to protect the fruit because the fruit, if it's exposed directly to sun, will get sun scald and you'll actually see a burn on the side that's, that's facing the sun. So, uh, a lot of people think that uh, fruit is supposed to be sun-kissed. That is not the case in the, with, uh, with citrus. They actually like it better when they're under leaf cover. And that's why when you're pruning, you should be thinking about how that leaf cover is gonna spread and protect not just the bark of the tree, but the fruit as well. So more of like a filtered sun. I'm imagining like these fingers were the leaves. It's kind of still sheltering the fruit as the sun is moving the leaves are offering different protection as right. it's getting some sun, but not like just getting exposed Direct to sun. here in the summer, 14 hours of light. Uh, the other thing I want to share is if, and especially when you get a brand new tree from the nursery, being the entire tree trunk, like the lollipop is now exposed to the sun. It's important to whitewash. And when I met with Dave Wilson, um, nursery spokesperson, Tom Spellman, he said, that the same day you buy your tree, same day you plant your tree is a good time to also whitewash your tree as it doesn't have a canopy. It doesn't have the lollipop or that umbrella shape to naturally protect the understory of the tree. So um, whitewashing is something that'll protect those exposed tree trunk and lower branches. And for the entire tree, fruit included, for the sun skull, you can actually do a foliar spray with the Ivory Organics um, 3-in-1 to also protect the fruit, leaves, and all the harder to reach stems if there's a concern of a heat wave. Yeah, I was gonna well. say, there's there's fruit that you're gonna say, there's no way that I could protect that with leaves. There's tons of fruit on this tree and I can see that the sun is hitting it. Well, 
this is a perfect example of why you would would spray it with some protection it's not that every fruit is going to get sun scalded even though they're all in the sun it's that some of them will if they're if it's a particularly hot day if we get temperatures over 100 degrees which we can expect that's when it's really important to have that protection and now for citrus care tip number five so the purpose of shaping the tree properly is to prevent sun scald you want a lot of leaf cover so that the the fruit is protected the trunk is protected but up until the time when you have that that really lush growth you may have to protect your tree or you will have to protect your tree if there's any uh, exposure to the wood directly to the sun because that young tree it's not yet established it hasn't even built its its root structure yet and uh, that tree isn't protected until the leaves start coming in so you have to paint the tree with whitewash or something to to protect uh, the especially the south and the west side of that tree where it'll, it'll burn and then that trunk won't heal for uh, a long time or you you want to establish a trunk that's strong from the beginning from the get-go so exactly so the goal with the tree trunk is the tree trunk is going to hopefully last for decades and you want to make sure that tree trunk remains healthy right underneath the bark is the cambium layer that moves the waters and the sugars you know between the roots and the leaves and the goal is to preserve that from ever getting damaged and until the tree can naturally develop a canopy and that's why the point with number five is to make sure you're timing your pruning to make sure that those leaves are in place protecting the fruit if there's fruit and protecting the understory the primary branches and the tree trunk and making sure you got the timing in a way that will hopefully maximize the health and longevity of i always call it the heart of the tree being the tree trunk and the lower branches because to me, that's the most important part of the structure. And if that gets damaged, then I'm shortening the health and the life of the tree. You made me think of something else, which is a lot of people ask me, why isn't my citrus tree fruiting? And they brought it home from the nursery. It had tons of fruit on it, but then they put it in the ground and there's nothing. And the reason for that is for the first three years that a tree is finally established or in the ground, it is putting all of its energy into its root system, you're not going to see a lot of fruit in the first three years. And then even after three years, if you do get fruit and it doesn't taste right, that's because it needs five years to get established. So never rip out a tree until you've given it at least five years, at least citrus. I've heard that from other people too. With citrus and other fruit, it just keeps on getting better as the plant matures right. and, and gains the strength to develop, you know, the maximum size, maximum flavor maximum quality that happens in time you can't expect that in year one two or three as you're saying right sometimes right. even up to five years so if, if it was in the pot it was thinking oh this is the farthest i'm going to go i better start putting out seed so it does start to fruit even though it's in a pot but as soon as it stretches its roots out into the ground it's like ah oh, i can I finally grow. yeah it's like finally getting home and it wants to get a foundation built before it puts out fruit. Makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's now continue with, we've covered five very helpful citrus care tips. Let's do some demonstrations. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. So before I prune this tree, I have to go through and take off all these uh, fruit. They've been on here too long. And also uh, it's really past its prime. If, if you take the fruit off of the tree, it tells it, okay, I'm ready for the next season. And on this side, I tried to put a Trovita sweet orange on it, but this is the Cuban Shattuck. It took over and the Trovita sweet orange got bumped off by a gardener, <laughs> the graft. But anyway, this, this um, I can use it next year to graft onto. And look how aggressive this is. What it is, is it's a root that went underground and then s sprouted up. This is not typical, by the way. Usually you see the, the, a branch coming out at the bottom. You don't almost never see a root producing a whole nother shoot. But that's just to show you how aggressive Cuban Shattuck is. And if you look at this, unbelievable, the spikiness on this Cuban Shattuck. 
and how different does the do these leaves that are so big look from for example this leaf so you can see even the leaf structure looks different and that's how you identify the difference between a, a sucker and the rest of the plant so this tree we had to paint this because it's really exposed there's no protection against uh, the tree except except soil <laughs> which I need to put more around this poor tree but this tree is really really happy here it's actually pretty healthy and are the, the roots and that's half the tree is the root system um, but that's how we're protecting it from the, the, the south and the west side this is getting a lot of sun so the second thing I'm thinking about after the suckers is the hygiene of the tree and there's a lot of dead wood in the center of the tree where it wasn't getting sun to the leaves anymore because the canopy started growing around that so you'll always find dead branches inside and you have to be so careful only to cut the dead wood off because sometimes there's leaves growing on that branch out at the tip and it looks like it's dead but it's not so you have to be super careful which things you cut and if you go inside under the tree with me you can see in this canopy here's a dead branch here's a dead branch you, you could spend uh you know like 15 minutes inside the interior of the tree just taking out the dead uh, branches so uh, you know a lot of them are really small and it's almost better to just um let them drop to the ground and then go back afterwards underneath the tree. This is an example of a water shoot or water sprout where it's coming straight up from a branch and it's not within the canopy of the tree. It's like trying to be its own tree. Now it has fruits and flowers on it which oh oh my god I don't want to get rid of fruits and flowers so it's an opinion thing. Do I want to cut this or do I want to leave it on the tree? But if you don't cut it and you let it go, it's going to have its own structure that's quite apart and separate from the rest of the tree. So if I want to keep it in bounds and I want to keep it all shaped as a round uh, tree, then I would cut it all the way down here to an outward facing bud. And I would point it in the direction I want the next branch to grow. So actually I kind of like this bud because it's facing this way. And there's two loppers, one that's uh, not as, as, well, they're both strong. <laughs> uh, this branch isn't thick enough to really need a ratchet pruner. So I'm gonna use this one, but the ratchet pruner is for really hard wood and citrus is very dense. It's extremely hard to get through. If you're talking about bigger branches, you're gonna need like a Florian ratchet pruner for that. But because this is less than an inch thick, I'm gonna go with my my um, Fiskars pruner that has a power gear. And watch how easy to take that off. So now we've just pulled out the pruning ladder to get to the top of the citrus tree. She's probably about eight to nine feet up in the canopy of the tree. And the goal now is to remove all the vertical growth so the tree doesn't continue growing tall. By removing the vertical growth and removing all of those auxins, we're gonna stimulate growth around the entire lollipop or the umbrella shape of the tree to continue maintaining that structure instead of resulting in a tree that's gonna ultimately be too tall and fruit out of reach. So let's get started. because I have to come back and cut to an outward facing bud and actually right, right now I'm just clearing a path so I can get to the parts of the tree that I want to reduce it to but look that one was the tallest that was getting the most juice that was getting the most oxygen now it's this one right or that one over there that has the, the hot the tallest one always gets the most energy the most juice and by juice I mean hormones and you, 
got to remember, these trees give a lot of fruit. So when you take some of these trimmings off of it, you're removing maybe what might produce fruit, but you're going to have plenty of fruit at the bottom. So I'm just going to give you an example. That had one orange on it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. It's going to be so prolific. How about if I give you some citrus, some uh, grapefruit? Oh, I'd love that. What is it? It's a real red grapefruit right off the tree. Oh, that's fantastic. Check out that color. <laughs> so it's got that pink blush that's typical with the real red, and you've got the yellow grapefruit look as well. This fantastic piece of fruit. Are. How cool is that? The value of growing citrus at home. It's a little late in the season for these, but we'll have to get at least one open to see if they're okay. And check out the next generation of fruit right over Judy's shoulder over here. If you can come in here, you can see all the flowers and, and then the baby fruit. And just imagine in less than 12 months, you get that. And they smell out of this world, by the way. It is amazing in here. It's like one of my favorite scents in the garden. It's like a little bit of uh, euphoria. Did you know that they light up the euphoric parts of your brain? I, so I remember um, in my discussions with a lot of gardeners and, and, and just other friends, I remember having a day that was a little blue, let's say, about a year ago and I was in the garden and I brushed up against the rosemary and smelt the rosemary and then made my way to the fig tree in the garden to smelt the fig. And all of a sudden I'm like, this is not gonna be, this is gonna be a pretty good day. And whatever wrong side of the bed I woke up on, the garden somehow made it all good. So that euphoria, the euphoria you're talking about with the scent and the smell of your citrus, I kind of get it just being around plants in general. And, and I do believe there's some more health aside from a lot of the medicines that are created from the foods that we eat, that there is another benefit that comes just by being near plants. Yeah, they've actually shown in studies that being around nature decreases depression. You just need to be around greenery. You need plants. Yeah. Very cool. So if you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay connected with these lessons as soon as they become made available. So here we are again with Judy of Judy's Homegrown in Rancho Palos Verdes. And she is a master gardener that serves this community as well as I know a lot of the surrounding cities. Where can people hopefully call you and get in touch with you and hopefully gain your skills to their home gardens as well? Well, I cover the South Bay, but I've gone as far north as Malibu. Oh, yeah? And if you just go to judyshomegrown.com and put your email address in, I'll send you a free planting schedule for your vegetable garden. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. And as always, encouraging you all to keep on growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all Happy gardening.